Hello Stampers! My name is Linda Bettinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today I'd like to show you how I made this card. This card is another of the ones that has been kind of living in my head for a while and I uh, decided to try and put it together today and I'm really tickled with the way it came out. Uh, this card says Happy Mother's Day but it, it the, the sentiment on this is almost inconsequential to the card um, and I'm seriously thinking about not putting that sentiment back on there and putting whatever greeting I'm going to put on the inside of the card and on the inside of the card this has a couple of features. This has a piece of window or acetate on it here and behind that is some vellum and then some of these items are captured in between the vellum and the window sheet. And so, um, and I've used the vellum piece here that I've colored so that regardless of whether you're looking at it from the inside or from the outside, you see a uh, color and the flowers make sense. And then these flowers that decorate the inside of the card are visible through the front of the card. So a little different and um, I've really enjoyed figuring this one out and it's not it's not that difficult. Uh, it's got a lot of pieces to it um, but not not that bad. So what you need to make this card is you need a whisper white base and uh, you start off with a base that's uh, eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter and then I just cut two and a quarter inches off of the front of the card so this is what you're left with then I cut two pieces one of the acetate that measures three inches by five and a half because I want this to cover the whole card from top to bottom and then a piece of vellum that is cut five and a half by three inches and um, then we need pieces from the uh, Sweet Soiree embellishment kit and what I have is um, a whole bunch of pieces here. Um, I've got this piece that starts out that's already colored. Then we have this vellum piece that we're going to color in so on both sides so it, uh, it it really is visible from both sides of the card. And then I've got some long leaves and some berry sprays and I've got a couple of leaves here from the paper pumpkin kit um, for February. Now I didn't use all of my paper pumpkin, uh, in fact I didn't use any of the vellum leaves and I'm going to color these and use them in this project. And then I thought about what one could do if you didn't have the paper pumpkin kit. Well, you could use the leaf punch and cut some leaves out of vellum and color them in and get the same effect. So um, that's what I'm using. The other thing you'll notice I've got this pretty pink um, ribbon with uh, silver embellishments along the side. And what that is, is the regular silver um, ribbon the white ribbon with the silver trim and what I've done is I have colored it in and that's where we'll start as we get started on making this card because I would like to have that have a little bit of time to dry. So I used my blends and I used the dark pink blend and that's pink pirouette. Um, the other thing you'll need is a couple of pieces of pink pirouette that are cut at five and a half by two and an eighth. Now on this piece all you do to get your color is just color along the white and like I said I did this with my Stampin Blends so you really could have and you can do this with markers as well um, and I've seen people use their ink pads and just drag it through the ink pad uh, to get the color on there as well and we need pretty large piece of this because it goes around the inside and the outside of the card and then gets tucked away inside. So I need at least five and a half, five and a half and a bit more 
So I'm going to color this out a little bit, and I'd say about a foot uh, is probably going to be enough. Now, there we go, and um, it dries actually pretty fast because it's an alcohol marker. I did get a spot here where I've got a little bit more color, so I thought I would kind of blend that in a little bit. And maybe if that doesn't work, maybe I'll go a little bit further here just in case I, I need the uh, other piece a little bit longer. All right, so I'm just going to set that aside and let that dry while we prepare some of the other parts of this card. Now, I am not going to make you sit here and watch me color everything. That would be counterproductive. So what I've done is I've started coloring um, this vellum piece here. And that's the piece that's going to go inside. And what's going to happen is we're going to tuck those two pieces or two or three pieces to the inside of the card. So again, I'm using my blends and I'm using the dark, I used the light cherry cobbler on the daisy and I'm using the dark, uh, let's see, I think I was using the dark pumpkin pie. Yep, dark pumpkin pie on the orange for these flowers. You know, it must have been the dark calypso coral. Let me see. As I put that down, I thought I knew what I was using. Nope, it's definitely the dark calypso coral to get a nice bright, turns out it's quite orange. <laughs> and coloring in these little petals on the top of the flower here. And then turn it over and color them on the back side as well because it's going to dry fairly quickly and that way we'll be able to see these flowers a little bit more clearly through the vellum on the inside of the card. And I've already colored these um, on both sides. And then I'm going to use the dark uh, Bermuda Bay here for these little flowers here. And I'm just going to color these in on the back side here. And I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to color them in on the front side. That, we have, that way we have the brightest color on both sides. The only other thing I used is I used the dark, I think it's Daffodil Delight, on the center of my daisy on both sides. Okay, so there we have that colored and to save a little bit of time I've already colored some of these other leaves. I'll do one of these and one of these smaller ones from the um, uh, paper pumpkin and on these I use the dark old olive and just colored the vellum and these are just outlines of leaves, so they're pretty easy to color. And then I flipped it over and colored the back side as well. So that I got a good bunch of color on this so that it could be easily seen on both sides. Now I did do one um, in the very pale, and I used the light old olive on that one. I thought it might be kind of fun to have a little bit of contrast. So we've got four of those and I'm going to color in this uh, long spray as well and on these you end up going over the silver embossing and it seems to be just fine. So I'm going to put that color on both sides again so we can see those green leaves on either side. Then we'll get to the construction of the card. Okay, so there we go, um, and these pieces I left without any color. So, let me uh, put these blends away, and we'll get to exactly how I put this card together. 
Um, and what I've done is I took my two pieces here of the vellum and the uh, window sheet and I used some fuse right along just on the inside. I'm going to put my fuse in about oh maybe a little bit more than a quarter of an inch so that I can tuck things and glue them on the insides. And I'm going to avoid putting a lot of glue right here at the top because when I split this apart that's where I'm going to tuck my ribbons to make them hot, hidden. So I'm going to start down just a little bit and put my line of fuse not right at the top and not right next to the edge all the way down to the bottom. Okay, then I'm going to take my piece of window sheet here and I'm going to line it up with the outside edges of the card until I'm very happy that it's going to fit just like a regular card front and then go ahead and lay that down on the fuse. You can see I've got a little spot in there and I'm going to try and get that out. Although now that I think about it, it it's a little piece of glue and it won't show but things like that just make me crazy. <laughs> so I'm going to try and get it out of there. I think I'm just going to have to live with it. Okay, so there we go. I've got my piece of window sheet set on here, and now I have what feels like a complete card front. Now I'm going to take my piece of fuse, and I'm going to do the same thing on the inside of the card. And um, what's going to end up happening is that by the time I put this on and then put the pink papers, while these two aren't glued down, they really don't move at all on this card. And in fact, it's hard to get them separated as you try to pick them up. So uh, there's no glue holding these two together, but it works on this card. So again, I'm going to take my fuse and I'm going to avoid putting a little bit of fuse right at the top so I have a place to tuck my ribbon. I'm going to move away from the edge of the card and I'm going to put my line of fuse down and then I'm going to line up my vellum here with the edges of the window sheet. So. Um, and you'll notice the paper has a little bit of a natural curl to it. Um, and as the result of that, I would be fighting it if I tried to lay it down this way on the card. So I'm going to put it down this way so that it will naturally cling to the opposite side. So I'm going to try that again. Get these two pieces lined up. It's really hard to see. I wonder if it would help if I put this on something dark. Reach for a piece of, this is cherry cobbler, maybe that'll help me see it a little bit better. Oh yes it does. And there's my pieces together now making the front of my card. And you can see the glue on both sides, but we're not worried about that because we're going to cover all of that up with our pieces of pink pirouette. Um, and so my pieces of pink pirouette will get glued down like this on the inside and the outside. And the inside gives a measure of some additional decoration for the inside of the card. So this, for this piece, I'm going to use snail and I'm going
going to glue down my pieces here going right to the very edge and everything's been cut so that it overlaps to hide everything else. There we go. And now, see my uh, card front was cut just a little bit short so that you see this edge of pink here. Now this piece is cut exactly the same and should cover up and match that piece on the front and still allow me to close my card. And if you had a little problem with that, what you would do is just cut uh, oh, just a sliver off of one side. And that's going to cover and not show from the front. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put my glue down on this piece. And cover up my piece from the front. And so there we have our pink down with nothing showing on either side. And um, so now we can start adding some of our pieces here and pulling this card together. Our ribbon is now dry, so maybe that's where we should start. I left a little gap on the inside here so that I could put a little bit of glue. What happened to my silicone mat, there it is. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back side of that ribbon to get it started. And then I'm going to pull this apart. There we go. And I'm going to set this ribbon down so that the silver edge is just on the outside of the pink. So you can see that. You see the little silver edge is peeking outside of the edge of the pink. And that's going to allow me to hide everything else. So now I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the back of my ribbon here. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and glue up most of that ribbon even though I think it's going to be too much. I just want to make sure I can do what I want to do here. So now I'm going to very carefully pull this ribbon down so that it is covering the pink on the inside of the card, coming around and covering the pink on the outside of the card and I'm matching up the little silver that was peeking out on the one side so now I have my card covered beautifully on both sides. Now I'm going to cut off this ribbon here and I am going to tuck this ribbon down on the inside of here to secure it. And it's already got some glue on it and now I'm going to pull this apart a little bit and add some additional glue and maybe even a glue dot to hold that in place. The last thing we want to do is have our card open up and show all the inner workings. <laughs> so I'm going to add a glue dot there and I'm going to secure those two pieces of ribbon together. Now there's a small gap at the top I don't think that's going to be noticeable. All right, 
So there I have my ribbon on. Isn't that pretty already? It looks nice and clean. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to take this piece and start my design here. And I put this piece up on dimensionals. And what I did was I took my pencil because I wanted to um, secure this down and I put a little tick mark on the underside on both ends and that way I could see and the whole point behind that is I don't want my dimensionals to go much beyond that at least not right to begin with until I get all of my pos flowers positioned so I can freely put some dimensionals on the back side here and I'm actually using quite a few of them and I'm taking it right up to that edge that I've marked um, because I want this to hold in place absolutely securely um, because it'll be sticking out over the window sheet. All right, so now I've got this set and I'm ready to put this one down. And there we go. Now, once I get my flowers and my pieces inlaid here, I can probably go back and put two mini dimensionals under these two pieces to hold them. But I want to be absolutely sure before I get too far. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is take this pretty piece and I have to decide how I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to open these two pieces and I'm going to tuck this flower right in here. You see then it continues the spray on up the page and I can see already I'm going to be able to put my little mini dimensional on the back of this without any problem at all. So now what I'm going to do and because we started our fuse back a ways I have quite a bit of this end that I can put some, some snail on both the end on both sides and tuck that in and secure that flower. So I'm going to open this up and tuck this in and secure that flower down and then I'm going to take one of my mini dimensionals And I am going to tuck one of those under this because now I'm pretty sure that's not going to show from the other side. All right. Now I'm going to take one of my longer leaves and tuck it in here and have it go up and across so that it makes the connection between those two flowers. And I'm just going to put some snail on the base of this stem. And actually, I can go all the way up on this because it's colored and you can't see the glue. And I'm going to tuck this in here and secure this all the way up. There we go. Now, I did take one of these little pieces and tucked it in the back in here. And I think I'm going to cut this off just so that it doesn't get in the way. Add a little bit of snail to the back of that leaf. And wiggle that into place there and set it down. Then I took another one that was a little bit darker and I did the same thing by tucking it in on this side. So once again I think I'm going to take some of that tail off and put a little bit of glue on this and Tuck that leaf in there. 
and there you can see our flowers are starting to really um, come together and give us the design. And on the inside, because we colored the back, it's very easy to see the flowers and it adds to the decoration on the inside. Okay, so now I'm going to take, I think I just used one of these little silver pieces here. Somehow these things just disappear from my table. But I just don't know, they must be small enough, they just stick to other things and disappear. <laughs> Okay, so this one I'm going to put a little bit of snail on the back side of it and just pick up a little bit extra of that silver and tuck it right in here. All right, so now on the inside of the card, what I did was I took several of these pieces here and actually I took three of them. And here's another. Okay, so on this side, what I thought I would do is um, they have I have this leaf here that I'd love to be able to secure down with a dimensional, and it's right here, and it would show if I did. So I'm going to take a few of these, and I'm going to clip off their stems, and I'm going to put a little bit of snail on the back, and I'm going to secure a couple of those right here where that leaf is on the other side. And I'm going to add to the decoration of the inside, hide that leaf, and allow me the opportunity to put a dimensional on the other side. So again here, just gluing these pieces down I'm going to add one more, and again, I'm going to cut off its stem, add a little bit of snail, which won't show on the other side because there's pieces on the other side, and just add this little detail right in here as an additional decoration to the inside. All right, now I have two of these pink roses and a colored um, leaf stem here and I'm going to start by putting my leaf stem down first and just having it go up the side here and then these both I just put snail on them and had them arrange them so that they were just down here crossing over one another. And so there's one. Add a second one. And we get the lovely benefit of having this pretty decoration on the inside, being able to see these flowers, having this little detail, and when we close it, that detail shows here. So that is uh, most of the card. What's left is the sentiment and um, I had also from the paper pumpkin kit but easily made were some of these um, this little vellum banner and what I did on this one is I just cut it in half and then I took a piece of my pink pirouette here and I've mounted a stamp that says Happy Mother's Day and my stamp comes from the Teeny Tiny Wishes. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and get it prepared and then I'll decide if I'm really going to add it. Uh, I used Berry Burst ink because I thought that matched this color in here the very best. And so I've got my Happy Mother's Day here, and I'm going to stamp that just right along the edge on the bottom here. Much better. Okay, so then I used my punch here, 
can't remember the name of it, but I'll have it up on the screen for you. And I cut out my Happy Mother's Day. I'm sure glad I didn't try to stamp that directly on the card with the luck I had. <laughs> I'd be very unhappy. Okay, so what I did here was I took my little vellum label and here we go again, it's disappeared. Fortunately, I have several of them. So I cut this little banner in half and I put a little bit of snail on either side of this and I just put it in place behind my stamped sentiment here on both sides leaving a little bit of a further tail okay and on this one I raised it on dimensionals maybe that's the problem let me try putting this oh dear looks like I've got a little bit of ink that's what happens when you don't close up your ink pads may have to figure something out for that. In any case, um, I think what I don't like about this is the fact that it's... Actually, I do like it much better down flat rather than raised on dimensionals like on this one. Sorry, sorry about the shadows, it's starting to get late here. Um, I do think I like it better just uh, without any dimension to it. Now I'm going to be careful not to go all the way over on my vellum here and see if I like it better up here or down here. I think up here at the top and over to this side and just flat. Well, it's a bit better anyway. I may end up taking both of those off and doing something else, but for now, <laughs> that's it. So that is the project for the day. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. Uh, and visiting um, and I hope you enjoyed that. I, I'm very very pleased with the way this card has turned out. I love the idea of using the window sheet and being able to see through. Well, I know what I'm missing is I didn't put a sprig of uh, green leaves on the back side so this looks fairly open and empty here and what I'm going to do is put a little bit of snail on the front side of this one and um, let me get that out of there and stick that inside between the two pieces and underneath this flower and stick it to the flower so there now, that is complete. <laughs> so, um, again, thanks again for stopping by. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator, or you could join my team. Right now is a particularly good time to join. There's all kinds of special deals. Uh, I had a lady join the other day. I think I said it in my last video. She managed to get over $220 worth of material for her $99. And so um, it's a real easy way to get started, save on your Stampin' Up! supplies, um, or start a little business for yourself. In any case, I'd be thrilled to have you on my team. And so um, again, that's the project for the day. And uh, I'll be back soon with more projects and more cards. Bye!